And also to mention, Javis has also been on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. And that has included FTX, Sam Bankman of Pride, and also Theranos founder Elizabeth Holm. Now, why does this phenomenon happen? To find out more of this, we are already connected to a senior research and advocacy associate at University of Indonesia, Puskapa, Rian Febrianto. Good morning, Rian. Thank you so much for joining us Good virtually. Wish that you were here today with us in the studio, but that could happen in our next endeavors. But thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me in this talk show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, Ria, so, let's just um, uh, jump to the first question. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was cutting you off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in my... Yeah. So, uh, in my opinion, this whole phenomenon indicates two symptoms. First, that it could be that these figures, these individuals represent some of the many young people who are trying all kinds of ways to achieve mm -hmm. their dreams and goals, including by manipulation and even committing crimes. Uh, the motive may be to gain social validation for success, and thus they will gain uh, more access to opportunities to build themselves and their businesses. And second, this could be a symptom of what I can say like an excessive promotion or glorification of success, which is increasingly shaping young people's aspiration for the future. So um, what I could say at the individual level, these symptoms that I talk about relate to uh, one's perspective and motivations towards success. For many individuals, especially young people, young entrepreneurs, success is closely related to such things as position, income, achievement, or the ability to achieve or adopt a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, and not infrequently, these things uh, are also very uh, highly materialistic. This is exer uh, exacerbated by the current high competition in the labor market, considering the high number of uh, productive uh, age population in Indonesia. Of course, this is not wrong in my opinion. However, when this aspiration mm. is continuously promoted through the media, including social media, popular culture, self-help books, it becomes a kind of main reference and new pressure on young people. Um, this obscures the fact that not everyone lives with the same conditions. Uh, our study uh, in Puskapa University of Indonesia that looks at specifically young people and children in, in urban areas found that the number of children and young people uh, in Indonesia has continued to increase, despite the fact that um, young people in urban areas fare better on several measures on well-being compared to those in rural areas, for instance. Marginalized groups still fail to survive and thrive. Access to basic services, for instance, and opportunities for a better quality of life in cities is limited for the urban poor and vulnerable, of uh, which children and young people account for almost a third. I see your point, uh, Masrian, and in fact, I do agree to it uh, to a certain extent. But how about I give you a different angle, and please feel free to dispute it or disagree with me. But could it be that these people are just basically fraudsters, and this has been a trend that has gone on for uh, ages, from decades ago. We have seen Ponzi schemes or all sorts of frauds and scams right. taking place. And yes, I've seen many documentaries, not just on Netflix, uh, in regards to uh, Elizabeth Holmes or Sam Bankman Freed. But in those cases, I could argue that these are just fraudsters that are preying on people's uh, weaknesses. For example, people's need uh, for getting rich or people's need to earn money. And in doing so, exploiting those weaknesses. In Elizabeth Holmes's case, it was much worse because they were preying on people's medical needs as well. And from an investor's perspective, it would be to obviously make money quickly. So could it be that now these fraudsters just have a much larger platform where they could reach more people and make these scams kind of like on a much larger scale? What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I absolutely agree with that. But it also says something about uh, young entrepreneurial spirits in worldwide, especially in Indonesia as well. Especially looking at uh, the fact that uh, in Indonesia uh, we are experiencing what we call as a demographic bonus, where uh, I could say like the proportion of productive age has a large portion in the population structure. So uh, these figures uh, actually they are being promoted as the successful figures and. Uh, as, as I said before, the motive uh, may be to gain social validation for success or to gain more access to opportunities or to build themselves and, uh, and their businesses. But what is alarming is that, that this kind of figures that they are listed as Forbes 30 under 30, for instance, right. and they are promoted as young successful figures that 
actually shape the aspiration of many young uh, people, especially um, particularly in Indonesia. Very true because, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we're exposed to this sort of thing, yeah. you get envious of other people. Right. Like, well, they're that age and they're right. very successful. How come right. I'm not there yet? And it creates this pressure that right. they need to do the same. Yeah. Especially when social media plays a big part of this, right? It seems with now, you know, shaping, you know, social media really shaping uh, young people's kind of future or their mindset. And we've seen not only with Elizabeth or um, the FTX, but also we've seen like in uh, you know, the, the streaming Netflix, there's Anna Sorkin with the Inventing Anna and whatnot. And they know even what, what they've done, being a fraudster and whatnot, and now they're putting it into like television, into movies and whatnot. So they famous. see it, exactly. Now I got the money, I got the, you know, I got, I'm being famous, I got also the money and whatnot. Okay, yes, there are some legals that I have to undergo, but hey, you know, being under bar, <laughs> behind the bars a couple of years, that's gonna be okay. Do you think that's the mental of the younger generation as of we speak right now? Yeah, um, the media, especially social media has a big, contribution i think in shaping the ideal standards i could say of successful mm -hmm. young uh, young people not only through for example like series through netflix that highlight the stories of elizabeth holmes for instance but right uh closely in our social media timelines right now especially on instagram and tiktok many young people display for example like their wealth their successes mm -hmm. and even provide some kind of like short success tips on Correct. or or like um, and, and often they focus more on like personal or individualistic approach to achieve successes. On the other hand, there are also quite a few young people, for example, who are proud to promote hostile culture, those Correct. who are willing, for example, to work hard yeah. with the rest, and, and, and they think that this is something that is natural to achieve success. Mm -hmm. But not only social media, I think, but it, also, uh, about, it is also related about uh, mass and conventional media that often for example, like uh, present figures of successful young people who represent young people in uh, urban areas, highly educated and even have generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And those who are successful are often described and shown through uh, individuals who built their own businesses, startups, or the, self, uh, the term self-made entrepreneurs. And in fact, we know that access of opportunities to develop and have higher education and have access to financial resources is not evenly distributed among various groups of youth. This is also uh, reinforced uh, by the glorification of young people who appear in various initiatives or programs such as uh, Forbes 30 Under 30, for example, mm -hmm. that feature mm -hmm. a handful of successful young people at a very young age. Right. In fact, we know from the cases mentioned earlier that the success they built could be fictitious. Mm -hmm. And the lack of fact-checking also of yeah. the achievements of these individuals in the program makes uh, whatever they present as factual as it seems to be. I completely yeah. agree as yeah. well. Don't and we always tell people don't believe everything you see on Correct. social media because yeah. it doesn't represent. But this is a printing media, though. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, Masrian, can you give us an idea of the labor market? What is it like right now? Um, because you know we heard of you mentioned mm. hustle culture. We also hear about quiet quitting. What is the actual picture? It's hard for me. I'm getting a little bit confused here. What is the actually uh, the condition of the labor market, and and how does generational differences play a role in uh, creating these specific cultures? Yeah, uh, currently Indonesia is experiencing a demographic bonus where the proportion of, as I said earlier, that the productive age has a large portion in our uh, population structure and. This certainly brings a window of, of opportunities for economic growth, uh, but also creates complex challenges on employment issues. For example, our uh, Central Statistic Bureau or BPS data shows that there are around uh, 66 million Indonesians mm. aged 15 to 29 years old, and the number will probably continue to rise in the future. This certainly brings prospects for future employment, but it also brings competition for the population of pro yeah. productive age in the labor uh, market or the labor competition. But not only that, there are many challenges actually when, when it comes to employment uh, faced by young workers. Um, for example, many young workers, especially in urban areas, are currently facing challenges related to precarious work, high turnover, which results in many layoffs, for example, and unstable work with low income and also neglected lab labor rights and uh, the youth unemployment uh, rate is also relatively uh, high. One in five, for example, in the labor force is 
unemployed based on data in 2020, the number is higher than the global average of uh, unemployment. And uh, discussion uh, spaces on youth and employment often discuss narrative of success through a few examples of successful youth, as, um, as we discussed before. Uh, for example, those who achieve something below uh, when they are uh, below 30 years old, for example, by building businesses or startups. And um, oftentimes there are also like a constant promotion or tips, suggestions on how to be successful. Right. Uh, this suggestion or tips are often highly individual, such as promoting integrity, effort and hard work and the importance of getting into a good school and achieve higher education as well as uh, improving one's own skill set to be able to compete in the labor market. There is still little discussion, for example, regarding the inequality of situations and conditions of various young people, structural issues regarding employment that make it difficult for young people to compete and be successful uh, like these promoted figures, regardless of their personal efforts that they make. Um, and despite these various challenges, I think, the belief in meritocracy, I think it is something that is still held in the private sector and is still being promoted frequently. Um, to give you a, a context, meritocracy is kind of like a notion where there is an objective measure of excellence, where social class, gender, disability status, or other identifiers do not really come into play. Mm. And meritocracy rewards those who have met an objective standard of excellence regardless of the context. It ignores privileges, advantages, and networks uh, bestowed largely at birth. Um, so yeah, and Which plays a big uh, part also when, when we talk about generational, yeah, generational differences, and does it play a role in creating a culture in the labor market? I think also what we see uh, in academics in UI, for example, many, studi many studies show that the current generation commonly referred to Gen Z, Gen Z mm -hmm. is uh, generally the generation that has more uh, knowledge and skills regarding digital technology, although we know that inequality also exists, especially in access to digital technology uh, in many places in Indonesia. This is something that was not um, happened or owned by a previous generation and certainly brings a lot of employment prospects that need to be more adaptive to digital technologies. And what is also interesting, I think, the, the new generation, the Gen Z, is more socially and politically engaged as well, more critical towards social and environmental issues and understand the importance of mental health. They dare to be, for example, critical of injustice, including in the work environment. Mm. I think this is an indication that the current generation of young people are, they are actually important actors in shaping future aspirations for a more meaningful and humane uh, employment prospect or environmental culture. Yeah, very good yeah. points that you brought up there, Masri. And unfortunately, it just raises more questions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, just one question though for me, uh, last one for me, with what you just said right now, then what do you think that, you know, youth and also policymakers can do to navigate and also deal with the, you know, hustle culture that you were mentioning before? Yeah, yeah. I think society, youth, especially the media, need to promote, uh, I think, other forms of aspiration for young people, such as, for example, like building healthy interactions and relationships, yeah. uh, maintaining mental health uh, yeah. and other non-materialistic achievements. And currently we see young people are starting to promote, for example, slow living culture, to mm -hmm. take a break for a while from their ambition to achieve success with a fast and efficient work phase, That's for example. True or through, as you mentioned earlier, quite quitting as a form of uh, reaction and criticism of toxic work environment. Right. I think we need to be more critical of also like figures appearing in the mm -hmm. media who are often seen as successful figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think policy-wise, uh, based on our studies, for many of young people actually, uh, good and meaningful employment needs to provide them with salaries and commensurate with the tasks and responsibilities and the cost of a uh, dignified life, especially in cities. Yeah. We need to make sure that there are laws, policies that give equal opportunities for everyone, mm -hmm. both by, for example, strengthening uh, our safety net uh, for when people fall, fall on hard times, mm -hmm. and by making sure people have actually equal opportunities to, to succeed in the first place. Yeah. So access to opportunity, for example, is not just an accident of birth, we need to strengthen all, also our social protection programs that target the poorest, the vulnerable populations, 
yeah. increase the access to quality education and create decent jobs for everyone. Yeah, but I do believe right now, especially with the Generation Z, they need to enhance with their emotional being because it seems, you know, they are hustling, you know, in their workspace and whatnot, but, you know, not emotionally attached, mm. you know, where probably our generation would be more hustling in that, you know what, we've seen a problem right in front of our face and we kind of deal with it as opposed to we're running away from it. So I guess, uh, you know, we can take the good, you know, the positive and also the minuses in every generation and implement that in the in the future generation. You know, I miss uh, the good old days when life was much simpler, when we yeah. were motivated in our careers and right. we did not seek that particular validation like you were saying, Masrian. So how do we fix this problem about the young people seeking validation, not only in their careers, but in their personal lives, just for the gains or just for the fact that they want to be liked. Like, who doesn't yeah. want to be liked? That has always been a feeling that humans have had, but it seems to be on the forefront more than ever. Yeah, but I think uh, validation seeking is something that it's common yeah. for mm. anyone, everyone, including young people in this generation, like especially right. in uh, social media generation. But particularly, I think we need to give young people the capacity to understand more about their self-worth regardless of the mm. narratives and over promotion of certain kinds of success through the successful figures in society True. and also we need to have more uh, discussion and information about mental health and critical thinking skills Correct. that need to be uh, ingrained or instilled to young people in dealing with this issue i think very well said. Masrian, thank you so much for your time. This is obviously a very in-depth discussion, and we wish we had more time to chat with you, but unfortunately, we are all out of it for now. But we hope to be able to chat with you again real soon or have you in the studio one day. Thank you very much, uh, Masrian. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Yeah. Have a great day. Uh, uh, live by two rules for me. Mm -hmm. Be happy and be kind to people. That's right. Everything else will fall into place. Yeah. You know, I don't seek validation from anyone except for my family. And right. I think that when I see situations like this and all the very valid points that Masarian had mentioned, yes, look at how, what it can lead to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are you, there's a fine line and a gray area between being motivated in your career or starting to look at how much greener the grass is on the other right. side and wishing that's what you had and then yeah. starting to think, I'll do whatever it takes to Correct. have that. You don't have any, any boundaries anymore in life, and that's where it becomes very, um, you know, dire Dangerous, in your life. Indeed. Yeah. All right, uh, we're going to take a short break, and uh, we will reset our moods here because when we return, <laughs> Hans will be back to share with you some recap from the news from around the world. So keep it right here on the Sea Morning Show. We'll be right back after this.